I don't believe that we should ever have a good money again before we take the thing out of the hands of government. Welcome back, everyone. We're Simply Bitcoin. We break down the news from Twitter, the daily fail, meme review, software releases, hardware releases, and the websites by plebs. Joining us today, fellow Bitcoiner and pleb support engineer at Voltage.cloud and host of At This Week in Lightning podcast. I'm talking about Nate. Nate is joining us. But right now, we're diving into the numbers. Let's do it. Number time. Brought to you by Bitcoin 2022. It's going to be the largest Bitcoin conference ever hosted in sunny sunny miami beach florida get your tickets quickly before the price goes up speaker list gonna be absolutely insane nayan bukele michael saylor safedine adam back jack maulers absolutely bonkers and you can take advantage of the link down below for 10 percent off your tickets to bitcoin 2022 at the time of this recording the block height is 723,329 the bitcoin price 42,470 chain rewrite days 715 Total public lightning capacity, 3,452.48. Moscow time, 2,355. Blocks to the happening, 116,671. And the Samurai Whirlpool unspent capacity, 4,372.47 BTC. And for the people who don't know what that is, this is a new metric that we've added now for a couple of weeks. And Samurai Whirlpool is essentially a coin join or collaborative spending service. So the unspent capacity in that, Nico, I think we've been, I think it's still around 190 million of the Kaka price, right? Correct, plus or yes. minus. And I want plus to give a minus. very special shout out to Simply Bitcoin's technical correspondent, Liron. Thank you so much for dropping your wisdom on the show. We bow down to you, my friend. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But anyways, Phil, I got some interesting stuff. We we got very interesting stuff on today's number segment. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about two subjects. First of all, this is absolutely insane. I saw this. I literally fell out of bed. I hit my head. I saw yellow. I freaked the fuck out. I got back in bed. It was crazy. Um, that's a foreshadowing of what's coming. Phil, only you know that. Uh, but anyways, check this out. Here we did is, it again. Uh, here is, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Uh, here is the hash rate of, you know, Bitcoin's hash rate. Check out that f giant orange candle up, popping the f off. Now, okay, guys, let me kind of explain you this. There's no way to know the hash rate 100%. It's essentially an estimation play based on the block time coming in, right? Uh, the amount of time each block is found, but you could safely tell, okay? Remember what I've been saying, guys, right? That for in order for the price, this is my theory. I don't know if it's right or not, right? And we're not speculating. We're not going to tell you anything. But from the miner's perspective, from my perspective, usually when the hash rate keeps going up like that, that is very, very bullish for the price it's usually a lead the hash rate is usually a leading indicator that's just my personal opinion and that is a huge huge jump up dude look at that right here's the infamous <laughs> china band right here where my mouse is i'll put an arrow in tomorrow's editing right here and here is today's hash rate right Est or estimation of the hash rate absolutely crazy a lot of miners went back online i have some images of, so to, to kind of give you guys an appreciation of how hard this migration was in terms of actual physical machines that had to be relocated from China to different parts of the world like Kazakhstan, like Texas. This is, you know, one of the biggest Bitcoin mines in the world. That's a lot of machines, right? Imagine all of that had to get up and go and it did it in record time all that heat all that all that electricity absolutely crazy and man it happened bro literally in less than six months in a completely decentralized manner like we've always been said we like we've always been saying on this show and absolutely crazy dude and phil like this isn't just breaking kind of all-time high like we were you know earlier on this is blowing past it right so again what does all this mean that means that Again, like we've always said on the show, the harder Bitcoin is to theoretically computationally attack, right, to rewrite that chain, 
So technically, right, the higher the hash rate, the higher the value proposition. And yeah, man, I'm, I'm just I'm absolutely mind blown that the hash rate has increased by that much. It literally just blew blew through the scale. I don't know what else to say, Phil. Man, a, a couple of things. First off, that picture, the the, the picture of the uh, of the mining facility, that that just that totally does it for me. I, I think that that's awesome. <laughs> I see that and I'm like, oh, that is so beautiful. But that chart. OK, I already I, I was already getting pretty bullish when we were at like the, the 200 ter the, the, the 200. What is it? Exahashes or terahashes? I, I totally I think it's terahashes um, when we were at the, uh, the, the or is it exahashes? Could be wrong about any of these numbers anyways. Um, but when we were at the 200 mark, I, I was already like, wow, I can't believe we're holding this. Like, I remember the, the between the 180 and 200, we sat there for a while and to see this move up to like. 250 i think it is or close to 250 and again like you said it's not exact it's an it's an aggregated number but still i mean this also this also makes me go back to our theory nico you know to your theory and it makes me think the clock is still ticking right the, the clock is still ticking for the for the for the theory to play out and for the caca price to all of a sudden start to move in sync or to follow the uh, the hash lead so but anyways I'm it's Absolutely. speculation, and we have no idea what we're talking about. But it's interesting. <laughs> oh, you're muted, bud. Phil, let's see how let's see how the theory plays out. Um, so, and it's terror hashes, by the way. It's terror yeah. hashes. Okay, it's thank you. <laughs> it's terror hashes. I knew one but, of my guesses would eventually work. But anyways, Nate, any thoughts on the hash rate? Uh, I know that you know you you're, you work mostly on lightning. That's what you focus on. But uh, you know, there's so many parts of of Bitcoin, right, that are under the rug, so to speak. Any thoughts? So mining is obviously really, really important. Thanks for having me on, guys, by the way. <laughs> so mining is obviously really, really, really important. I want to see the hash rate explode. And um, I have been to the Houston monthly meetup the last few times, and mining is extremely bullish here. I just wanted to point that out. So I think uh, I'm not sure what could have caused that spike or, or whatever, but I think the trend is good, and I think the health of the network is definitely measured by the hash rate. So I'm very happy to see that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's definitely one. And, and we've always said on the show, right, if you want to look at the health of Bitcoin, prices are relevant. What you should be looking at is the node count and the hash rate. If the no, if the amount of nodes on the network continues to go up as it has been, and if the hash rate continues to go up, that means that Bitcoin is stronger. It means that Bitcoin is more uncensorable, that Bi Bitcoin is more anti-fragile. Look at all those words, Phil. Can't can't believe Very it. But anyways, anyways, I like that. Check this out. Um, so we talked about this a couple days uh, ago, pro probably like a week ago, guys. Um, mm -hmm. And we had some things to say about this. And Nate is actually going to correct us on some of it. So anyways, uh, just to kind of give you a refresher, I think, Phil, you pulled this up, right? This yeah. Is the Go ahead, Phil. Oh, yeah, no, that, that's right. Uh, we were talking about essentially uh, Voltage.Cloud. Um, we were explaining that they, they essentially offer a, a cloud-based uh, solution to being able to run your own node. And we were just giving kind of the pros and cons of that and, you know, essentially explaining what we thought of it. And Nate ended up DMing me. Uh, about it and wanted to explain more and I was like hell yeah, you know, let's let's get the you know what I mean? Like why not? That is some of the best perspective that we can get. So so look Nate, you were you know, you were watching our show and you know, what are your like, you know, what are your thoughts on I mean, I guess look, what what are your thoughts on, you know, the the centralization yeah. of services like this uh Well, I I so I've been at Voltage since last September and um full-time right now first of all nate why don't why yeah. don't you explain it to the audience yeah. what it is why someone would use it etc yeah. etc sure yeah so voltage is sort of a it's filling a lot of gaps not just in lightning nodes but other parts of the bitcoin ecosystem so the first and foremost product that voltage has is uh lightning nodes uh we we do lnd and you uh pay a monthly cost and you get access to a lightning node, basically pretty simple. Um, but there's, so there's like a few different like types of people that would really, really like voltage. Uh, one of the, okay. So there's businesses. So we have a node plus BTC pay server combo. So you don't have to sort of manage your own node. 
in like a hardware updates, maintenance support, like that all comes with that price. And we think that's really cool. So like there is, for example, a, a, a guy selling motorcycles and he has his BTC pay server with us and gets that support. Um, there are also things like if you're running a node at home, but you want to have like a separate sort of ticket sale or something, you could just spool up a node real quick on voltage, um, get some inbound liquidity and, and make a BTC pay thing. So like something really quick like that, that you want segregated for your own node at home um, is, is great. Also, we have lots of APIs. We have a lot of developers that use voltage as a way to experiment and tinker with their own apps that they're building on lightning. Um, Zion, Get Zion is, is one of them. And we have a few of those. So, um, and another is just like someone who's traveling the world and doesn't have time to manage a node at home, but they still want to have a node. So lots of little uh, use cases like that. And um, Voltage is constantly growing and, and providing those services right now. Awesome, dude. I love having Bitcoiners actually building on Bitcoin. Um, and the best part about Lightning, right? It's like, you know, the icing on the cake is that just defeats all all the shitcoin narratives, right? Um, I, I it, We had someone in the comments a couple days ago um, essentially saying like, oh, Bitcoin is this dinosaur, it's this slow, it's a whatever. I'm like, dude, have you seen the Lightning Network? It's cheaper than whatever shitcoin you're talking about. Um, so, yeah, man, absolutely bullish. Nate, thank you so much for coming on the show and clarifying that. Um, and look, it's funny because you gave... It, I don't. I don't know if it's funny. It's interesting to say the least. You gave a very similar answer to what the Nato guy said when they came on the show because yes. we asked them the same mm -hmm. question. Like, why That's would right. anybody want to run an, a, a a node on a cloud, right? And you gave a very similar question, a very similar answer to why someone would want to run Lightning in the cloud, right? It's for a business owner, perhaps it's for a Bitcoin nomad. You know, moving around, right? Maybe they don't want to run that. They don't want to do the 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 lightning maintenance uh, from their node specifically, so they outsource that. I, I think it's absolutely necessary, and it's going to definitely facilitate a, a more bit a more businesses using lightning uh, because perhaps before they felt um, you know overburdened, they felt it was very it was too technical, um, and then you guys could kind of walk them through that. Well, believe it or not, Voltage has actually been a part of the uh, pull request on LND, and we've actually implemented ways to encrypt your node password. So if we were subpoenaed or audited, they would just get an encrypted disk, and we don't even have access to any of your private keys or anything, because that's all encrypted with your node password that we never see. If you lose your node password, we can't go in and change it for you. You lose, you've lost your money at that point. That's um, important. Very, very interesting stuff. But anyways, Phil, it's time for The Daily Fail. Brought to you by Amber App. Check them out, amber.app. It's Bitcoin made easy, smart automations, fair spreads, low fees. It's a Bitcoin stacking app by actual Bitcoiners. The link is down below. Amber, the smart way to stack sets. We're kicking off the fail segment by wishing everybody a happy Valentine's. And of course, the shitcoiners. They're wishing everybody a happy Valentine's too. As we can see over here, we've got Valentine Floki. This is a uh, this is some shitcoin that Rug pulled on the BSC chain, and we can see what right here. Nice little gift, little Valentine's gift. So to everyone, happy Valentine's. Great. Okay, moving on from that. All right. So today we did not release a video, and our our fellow watchers and our fellow Bitcoiners. That's right. They call us on it every time. Lucky Red Fish calls us right on it. This is our pin tweet, Nico. Look at what we tell everyone. Oh, by the and way, this failed. was this was not we Phil's failed. fault. This was my fault. It had something to do in the morning, so we couldn't. No, and take it like a team, okay? It was all that our stuff. Fault. It was it was it was our fault, but really it was my fault. Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay though. It's we we appreciate getting called out on it. We did provide a clip and, and a meme. Yeah, I'm just, it's true. I'm kind of defending us. Kind of we, defending us. And I know let, we shouldn't. And oh. let us know how we're doing on the clips, guys, because we're trying Please. something new, right? So we're trying a little bit different format. Um, let us know how we're doing on the clips. Drop us some feedback in the comments. That's right. Comment, comment, That's comment, right. comment, comment, comment. Let me know how terrible I am at editing. Okay. <laughs> and, all right. So this is an interesting, this was an interesting little video by BTC Styles. I, I'm assuming that this person made it. Um, I don't have any evidence that they did not or didn't have any part of it. But anyways, 
They are the ones that posted it, and this is a video about NFTs that we are just going to take a quick look at, okay? Why waste all that time hanging a painting in your home like you're some sort of Renaissance baronet when you could just pay to associate your name with a JPEG of a feckin' echidna? So you're saying that I should collect art by purchasing exclusive ownership to a piece someone posted online? What is this, the 31st century? No! You can only pay to associate your name with a URL where an image is located. Sure, everyone else on the planet can still look at it, but you can rest easy in the knowledge that you're the only one who owns a computer picture of Master Chief making sweet love to Mega Man. And that undeniable fact will be stored forever on a blockchain. The great chain that records transactions between tech bros named Bryce for all of digital eternity. Okay, but what happens if the URL goes offline? Yeah, that has gone. I waste all that time. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, that was awesome. Oh, that, that was man. pretty awesome, right? That, that was a great video explaining exactly what, quote-unquote, owning an NFT is like. Anyways, that's right. You only all all that you're hanging on to is the representation of ownership. That means absolutely nothing, right? That's like when a company tells you that you have a mandate to do something. Mandates mean nothing. They're not and, laws, they're nothing, they're just words. And and <laughs> legally as well. You don't you do not you don't have any type of legal protection when you own an NFT, right? Which I think a lot of people, specifically artists, are, are in for a rude awakening, right? We see those horror comments of like, take it, that's my image, delete it, delete it. Um, but Nico, but yeah. they protect the artists, remember? <laughs> protect the artists by stealing their art for them and getting somebody else to get paid for them. It's listen, amazing. Listen, if you've The cycle been, of love. If you've been in Bitcoin for a little bit, the, the NFTs are the ICOs of this cycle, right? In 2017, it was... The infamous ICOs this cycle is JPEGs on a blockchain. Anyways, Phil, what right. is what is the big shabaki of the fail? Okay, here we go. This is the this is the big part of the fail. This is where we, we actually go look at a proper shitcoin that pretends, like all the shitcoins do. Let's dive into it. Pancake swap decks reportedly set to block users from Iran. That's right. Decentralized exchange platform PancakeSwap will reportedly start blocking access to Iranian IP addresses. PancakeSwap will begin geo-blocking users from Iran and nine other jurisdictions on March 9th. Belarus, Cuba, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Iraq, North Korea, Sudan, Syria, Zimbabwe, and Crimea. While such restrictions are often bypassed using VPNs, this also this has also come under the radar of the U.S. Treasuries of Foreign Asset Control. We recognize them, right? The OFAC, especially regarding U.S. sanctions. In October 2021, OFAC published guidance that included calls for crypto businesses to monitor the use of VPNs on their platforms. Do you remember what we tell you guys all the time that these shit coins and these shit coin platforms, they just pretend to have the qualities of immutability, censorship resistance, decentralization. They just pretend. But you see, PancakeSwap has no freaking choice but to go and comply with this absolute nonsense from an agency that nobody voted in, nobody decided these people should have power. I, I know I didn't. I am pretty sure that most of the people watching this didn't. Most of us didn't even know these people existed. Okay, but there they are creating rules for things that we've already debunked that they're not actually working and they are costing us more money and time, such as all the anti-money laundering acts and whatnot. But what's really, really despicable is that these shit coins are constantly, constantly trying to fool you into thinking that you're buying the next Bitcoin, the next best Bitcoin. Only Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. And every single one, like, look, PancakeSwap's the first one. You're going to see another one next. Okay? PancakeSwap is huge. I think it, it can, what is it? Uh, I believe it, it, uh, it holds over 30% of, like, the total value locked from all these DEXs, from all these, quote-unquote, decentralized exchanges. Yeah. I mean, it, it's insane, man. Absolutely, dude. And 
Look, it, guys, if, if, you're, if you've been following the channel, this should not come as a surprise to you. The OFAC, the Office of Foreign Asset Control, was also, you know, they did put pressure on Mar Marathon or Maripool, right, one of the largest miners in the United States, to censor transactions, um, to do the same thing, right? Essentially, censor transactions, you know, if those transactions uh, came from a certain country or, you know, they, they were blacklisted by the U.S government obviously that completely black fired uh people would send dust from blacklisted transactions to that you know blocks that maripool found uh maripool actually had to backtrack and say here we're not gonna you know make any ofac compliant blocks and my, i might add right is that iran also mines bitcoin right so any blo any uh any blocks that any miners in iran find are just going to be added to the blockchain and it doesn't matter and the office of OFAC isn't going to be able to censor that, censor that so the worst thing that they could do is just potentially delay certain transactions if they come from certain countries but because bitcoin is actually decentralized right uh dude they can go pound sand right and again this is what we've been saying they are trying to morph bitcoin into the old legacy system they're going to fail but that doesn't mean they're not going to try in the they're, they're not they're, they're not going to try in the meantime right um yeah. but yeah man look it, it, it really highlights right which is why we talk about decentralization why we talk about bitcoin on this show this bitcoin this uh you know the shit coiner in the comments really got you know really got under my under my skin because he's like dude it's so slow it's a dinosaur it's whatever and i'm like and i had to dude i wrote a giant ass paragraph and i basically i basically said i'm like listen bitcoin puts decentralization above all and this is why right they don't get if, it if your cryptocurrency is not sufficiently decentralized and it actually starts becoming a threat to the power of nation states the, they're gonna shut it down look they're they gonna just get, did it they're gonna get pancaked they're gonna get pancake swapped <laughs> right that, that's what's gonna happen they're gonna get pancaked right in the face right only bitcoin could withstand it and it's so it's bitcoin is so powerful that it scared the shit out of the chinese communist party to the point that they had to ban it right and even after banning it it's estimated that still around 10 to 15 percent of the hash rate is still in uh, um in chinese borders that's how strong the incentives of bitcoin are right anyways bad news for totalitarians which we're going to talk about in the new segment but i'm going to shut up and i want to get our guest nate's thoughts nate what are your thoughts on pancake getting pancake swapped I mean, exactly what you said, right? Like, these are red flags that as Bitcoiners, we can pick out really, really easily. And, you know, we've been trying to help people that are curious about Bitcoin in the space not fall into these traps. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised at all. And we need to... Um, I mean, I Bitcoin sets the standard, right, for like all competition. So if you can't meet or exceed that, then there's no purpose to it. That's that's my thought. Absolutely, you know, and I think this is what you know a, a lot of the shit coiners unfortunately get lost in, and we try to do our best to you know at least produce a counter narrative right what is the what is the end goal of bitcoin the end goal of bitcoin is separating money from state i fundamentally believe humanity will not be free until that happens we need a secular money we need an apolitical money and none of these shit coins they sacrifice decentralization for spa faster transactions for more uh functionality like they like to call it but at the end of the day if you sacrifice the centralization to use satoshi's own quote right governments are actually very good at metaphorically cutting off the head of centralized entities and apparently pancake swap is one of those because if they weren't then they wouldn't have they wouldn't have been pressured into censoring certain transactions from certain countries like look that, that's so insane from the bitcoiners perspective you're looking at that you're like huh you know but hey dude that's what happens with anything centralized but anyways phil it's time for the daily meme review brought to you by citadel 21 it's the best bitcoin cultural zine it's stories articles comics by actual bitcoiners 
And they're scarce. There's only a thousand copies made per volume. Get your print of Citadel 21 today. All right, everybody, the meme for today. The memes for today. Plural. Memes, not meme. And we keep adding more, too. We started with one, right? Then it was uh, Satoyoshi that was like, you guys should do more. So we keep adding him because it's a lot of fun. Anyways, check this out. This is North Korea, by the way. Fiat billionaires with no Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely true guys i'm gonna give you a little bit of signal if you know you know much rather be a sat billionaire than a fiat billionaire especially as time progresses if you know you know anyways moving on to the next one this is by captain jack leota my bitcoin wallet my bank account and this here he's doing it right you should have the minimal amount of fiat in your bank account you should have a couple overdraft fees, you know, that as your stamps of being a Bitcoiner. Uh, and yeah, your Bitcoin wallet should, you know, should look like that guy. Kind of scary, though. Anyways, uh, moving on by Spinte, legendary memester. Inflation is transitory. Okay, maybe it's not transitory, but we could weather the storm and print more money. Whoa, these inflation numbers are aggressive. All the poor people noticed it, but the Fed did it. I can't even afford to eat anymore, let alone buy. <laughs> oh, man, this is absolutely hilarious. And, dude, look, we're laughing at this, but this is exactly what happened in Clown World, right? It was like, first, it's like, there is no inflation. Then it was this transitory inflation. Then it's the supply chains. Notice, this is when you know they're fucked, right? They're blaming everything but the everything. fact that they're printing a record amount of money that is never mentioned by any of the people in power ever right it has to do with supply chain and the sickness of the world right now the pandemic right but it has nothing to do with the, print, the money printing so fucking funny anyways moving on next one is by shishi i think i have a cold this will help <laughs> communism <laughs> Boy, I have to like that, bro. That dude, shit is hilarious. That was a good one. I uh, thought of you. Uh, dude, it's hilarious. Okay, by Honk Honk Roller, Top Rolly. Trucker funds that could be frozen. Go fund me. Give send go, right? You know, the media's focused on that. And trucker funds that's, that cannot be censored. Bitcoin on Honk Honk Hoddle. Absolutely hilarious. And moving on to the last one. What? I have to give credit where credit is due, of course, by the legendary rd underscore btc from the meme lords the meme factory that doesn't exist anyways noob seeing the coinbase ad this was referring to the coinbase ad during the super bowl and coinbase servers crashing <laughs> that's right guys uh coinbase spent you know i think it was like 15 million dollars or something on this it, by the way to give them credit it was an awesome ad during the super bowl unfortunately they couldn't take full advantage of it because coinbase went down <laughs> they didn't prepare for all of that traffic uh but anyways awesome awesome memes and for that i'm going to give it a very ominous score shout out to shishi think about how big uh, you know, Bill Gates' head has to be that he has to add a Windows key to every single goddamn Windows keyboard. That is scary. And by the way, rumor has it, if you press this key, Bill Gates comes out of your computer and asks you whether you have taken the jab or not. Phil, what would you give those memes? First off, that is an awful feature that nobody should use. Okay, nobody. Don't needs don't it. press the Windows button. Don't nobody press needs it. The, the the Bill Gates scare jump key. Don't, okay, do, nobody do needs not that. press it. Do not press the Windows button. Bad things happen. I just want to remind people that Coinbase crashed in 2017 without a Super Bowl ad. So apparently, they still haven't gotten their infrastructure up to par yet. It doesn't make a difference what bull run we're in. It doesn't matter how many people go. It's just again and again. So Coinbase, you know, I mean, if you're going to fleece the noobs, at least have the infrastructure to freaking get them to sign up, bud. Have you noticed that they crash right <laughs> when either we have a major pump or major dump? They conveniently always crash during those. Always. Is that some of the times? It's always. Just or, saying. Or, or now it's apparently when they pay for traffic, too. <laughs> so they, let's bring them in. Infrastructure? Oh. Oh There's going to be a meme for that one, for sure. There's going to be a meme 100%. for that one, right? I mean, there already uh, is. Shout out, RD. Anyways, Phil, what would you give? <laughs> what would you give those dank memes? Take a look at... You know what this is? No. It's a finger massager. What? 
It's a finger massage. No, no, don't do it. Bad things are going to happen. Okay, yeah, <laughs> all right. Anyways. I can't uh, undo it. Uh, Nate, Nate, uh, uh, what would you give those oh, memes? Um, okay, I would give it a uh, timeless tale of Yurgle the Turtle, the story <laughs> of a young turtle named Mac who single-handedly brings down a tyrant. I highly recommend. Oof. Wow. Is that, is that a banned book? I don't know, but I have it, and it's my favorite Dr. Seuss. <laughs> You're a little bit turtle, man. <laughs> Dr. Seuss? <laughs> dude, soon every book's going to be offended, banned. I'm not offended, but somebody I, will Dr. Be. Seuss is based. Man. That, dude, yeah. that book is a danger to democracy, okay? Dude, let's, <laughs> ju- let's just get some things straight. Anyways, awesome scores. We got uh, Bill Gates' death key. Uh, we got Phil's... And anyways, and we got uh, the Dr. Seuss Danger to Democracy book. Anyways, guys, we want to know, do you agree with our scores? Do you disagree? Let us know down in the comment section. And of course, don't forget to join our Telegram group to link us some dank Bitcoin memes to review. And make sure to subscribe to us on alternative video platforms because we do talk shit about Bill Gates like Rumble.com and our personal favorite BitcoinTV.com. They don't censor there. Because of Bitcoin TV. But anyways, Phil, it's time for the Daily News. Brought to you by CryptoCloaks.com. They make the best 3D printed Bitcoin merch. Like the famous Bitcoin art grenade sculpture. Opens up. You put your favorite hardware wallet in there. Also, you can get in any color your heart desires. It's freaking awesome. And you can take advantage of the link down below. For 5% off CryptoCloaks.com. Alright guys, so... You've been subscribed to this channel and you've been watching this show. Uh, we, you know, in the beginning, Phil and I, we used to, you know, kind of be a little insecure about, you know, predictions and things that we we, we thought we were, we were going to see in Bitcoin. Because it, we were just like seeing it from the angle of like, how the F do just these two, you know, simple Bitcoin plebs consistently get things right? that you know the legacy corporate media overlords get completely wrong right um and then we started to figure out that the legacy corporate media really isn't into news they're more into propaganda right um and we had you know one of the proudest moments that we had on the show um was calling out essentially a couple days before um that they were essentially going to label the fact that truckers were able to raise money in bitcoin racist and white supremacy right we were we we called that out in fact we called that out uh february 8th and you know to our delight um february 11th right on tucker carlson tonight guess what he did he brought up the same point you know so it was absolutely mind-blowing to us uh you know tucker carlson tonight has 3.5 3.5 on average 3.5 million viewers right he is the second most watched show number one is joe rogan um and anyways i made a little montage of you know exactly how it all went down and fucking crazy let's uh check it out give it we? to the legacy corporate propaganda media to attack it anyways let's check out this article by a very very main publication right the economist the charm <laughs> of cryptocurrencies for white supremacists. They made this whole article, all these pictures, all of this to point out that it's 600 people and that's a problem. Why are they doing this? Because people are circumventing their systems of censorship, right, to raise money without them in a system that they can't capture. But So keep in mind that truckers raised $10 million on GoFundMe, that's a California company, but Canadian politicians had that effort shut down. Then Give, Send, Go, which is a Delaware company, raised almost the same amount, and Canadian politicians went after that money, too. The Attorney General of Ontario successfully got a court order to freeze access to the $8.4 million raised on Give, Send, Go. Those funds were going to an adopt-a-trucker fundraising campaign. It was paying for, quote, housing, water, food, accommodations, and shuttle services for truck drivers in Ottawa. But all of that money has just been stolen by the Canadian government. It's been seized. All of this is pushing people away from government-issued currencies because they're in control of lunatics like the guy you just saw, and they're moving toward cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Just like 18 wheelers on bridges, blockchain is pretty tough for the authorities to control. Therefore, here's how you know it's a threat. The crypto guys must be white supremacists. And lo and behold, that's exactly what they're now telling us. It's an avenue 
um, not just to make a lot of money or lose a lot of money, but it's also an avenue for money laundering, and it's also a, a place where white supremacists apparently are taking options. I mean, it's problematic at best in so many ways. Man, absolutely crazy. That's the that's the, the, they don't have any they don't have any other arguments left, right? It, it, it's just it's 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 pathetic, right? Um, Bitcoin is for everybody. Bitcoin actually helps people of color the most, right? That live in countries with tremendous amount of inflation. I'm Venezuelan myself, right? Venezuelans are using Bitcoin to escape their government debasing their currency. That doesn't sound very white supremacist to me. And in the article, when we did actually cover this, it was only 600 Bitcoin and shitcoin addresses. 600 compared to the millions of people that Bitcoin is helping, right? Which we cover on this show, like the Afghanis that have been completely cut off from the global financial uh, system. Guess what? Bitcoin doesn't care. And I just want to give one criticism to Tucker Carlson, right? You said crypto. But the money being raised is in Bitcoin. And as Phil pointed out during the pancake shabacle, right? <laughs> because these cryptos don't have sufficient amount of decentralization, as they start to become bigger and bigger threats to the nation state, the nation state will crack down and will attempt to censor them, right? We know with AW, we know with Ethereum, for example, right? The majority of Ethereum nodes are run on AWS servers, right? So again, right? If uh, to use Satoshi's own quote again, if there's a metaphorical head to chop off, the government is very good at chopping it off. But decentralized systems are holding their own. And that is the case with Bitcoin, right? So shout out to Tucker for mentioning Bitcoin. But then he has a fucking image of Doge, XRP, and Ethereum. And unfortunately for the NPCs, it makes false connotations that somehow they're all equal. And they're not, right? And the reason they're not is because Bitcoin is decentralized and those shit coins sacrifice to centralization for some cool shit uh features that shit coiners appreciate but while they're trying to get lambos we're trying to separate money from state anyways phil what are your thoughts yeah i i just it just totally makes me cringe when they go and put those logos right uh, of the other cryptos because let's face it what that does is it provides validation for their shitcoin narrative and what's going to happen is like let's say you know like for for example right ethereum is moving to you know to proof of stake you know so we all know we saw you know we've shown the ethereum foundation right their ties to the wef the fact that they have a kyc aml expert that sits on executive board which makes it so that ethereum just doesn't get touched in my opinion um you know they're going to, you know, I can see them kind of like, I, I could see the media kind of coaxing people into these other shitty projects that aren't Bitcoin and, and essentially getting these people's, th these people getting wrecked, right? Like these people just getting wrecked because they're looking for the qualities of censorship resistance, right? They're seeing the story of the truckers. They're seeing the censorship resistant, the decentralization qualities. And they're like, I want to have some of that. And then they get misled into buying some shit coin that pretends to have those qualities. And when do they find out that it doesn't have those qualities? When it when needs to have late. those qualities the most, yep. right? In a situation where they get censored, in a situation where their funds do get frozen, in a situation where they get rug pulled, then it's like, oh, it's not Bitcoin. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, so to me, that's what's happening there. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's, um, I love the montage that you did, by the way. Appreciate it. Uh, Nate, <laughs> so uh, any thoughts on what's going on in, uh, in yeah. old Canada? I mean, so my thought, like I was thinking about this today and I was thinking, you know, it's great that, you know, to get out there and, you know, march for your freedom and do all that stuff. But, you know, the best thing anybody can do anywhere in the world, you know, every sat you stack is a proverbial bullet fired sort of right? if you take self-custody if you take self-custody absolutely that is 100 percent required for this so you know for example if you know canadians got together not all of them have to do it but if they started stacking sets doing bitcoin economies locally whatever in the rural environments and stuff canadian dollar would fall apart and they would have no choice but to sort of like appease these people with that said, you know, this is the sort of thing Bitcoin was made for, uh, referring to the crowdfunding thing. I mean, it, it's one of the things that it was, it's, we've always theorized it to be good at, 
but now we're getting to see it in real time, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, and about that article, the best thing about Bitcoin is that anybody can use it. If like pro mandate Canadians wanted to spool up a Bitcoin crowdfund to help their cause, go for it. <laughs> you know, no one says you can or can't do that. Um, and I guess the last thing I'll say is um, I think governments are Bitcoin's best marketing team. And, you know, they just keep keep helping Bitcoin <laughs> in a lot of ways. So. They, they definitely are, man. They definitely are. You know, as they try to centralize more and more and more in, you know, in the hope of, you know, in, in their quest for more and more control as the fiat system collapses, mm -hmm. you know, people are just looking at Bitcoin. It's like, it's a lot nicer over there. I'm going to go over there. You know, they built themselves a golden cage that they thought was impenetrable, but people are just getting out of the cage and they can't get out of the cage that they built for themselves, right? right. So anyways, it's going to be interesting to see. And speaking of governments and banks being the best marketers for Bitcoin, check this out. Again, if you've been following this show, guys, we've been telling you this was inevitable, right? And this sets a very dangerous precedent, and this is not going to stop. They did the same thing with uh, with uh, Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy, right? That's very involved in, in politics in mm -hmm. the United States. They did the same thing with some of the January 6 uh, protesters, right? Whether you agree with the protest or not, some people call it insurrection, some people call it a protest. We're apolitical. We're not taking any side. But what we will say is that we think it's wrong for you to be debanked right uh no matter who you are right you know mm -hmm. uh you know if you commit a crime pay your dues to society right you know serve your time whatever but that shouldn't mean that you shouldn't be able to open a bank account that's kind of fucked up isn't it um anyways uh td bank freezes accounts that received money for canada protests right so now banks are politically censoring and remember, these are the same people that want to go with central bank digital currencies. <laughs> what Anyways, could go wrong, Nico? What could go wrong, right? Uh, 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 here's the jump scare of Xi Jinping. Okay, uh, Toronto Dominion <laughs> Bank has frozen two personal bank accounts into which 1.4 million Canadian dollars has been deposited to support protesters fighting the Canadian government's pandemic measures, a bank spokesman said on Saturday. They don't have anything left. They don't have anything left. They're like, it's the climate and white supremacy. That's what it is. It has to be that, right? Where it's actually hilarious because Bitcoin actually facilitates and incentivizes, right? Uh, because it makes green energy actually profitable. I would even say that Bitcoin helps the planet, right? Because it forces energy producers to be even more efficient. Because if they're not efficient, right? All of that waste, quote unquote, wasted energy goes to waste and it's wasted Satoshis. And in terms of the white supremacy, the white supremacy argue, argument is the funniest shit. Because Bitcoin is helping, literally, most people, right, that suffer from inflation, from, from severe inflation or debasement of their currency, are people of color, are people that live in impoverished countries. Bitcoin helps them the most. So the fact that they're calling it, it's absolute lunacy. This is the meltdown from the propaganda arm. Anyways, TD applied to the Ontario Superior Court of Justice on Friday to take the funds which were which were sent through GoFundMe and bank transfers so they could either be sent to the to the intended recipients or returned to the donors who have requested refunds but who's entitled to a, a refund cannot be determined by TD. So essentially what they're trying to say is yes, they stole the fucking money and because you know they're putting they're under the guise of a judge did it, that makes it okay. And think about it this way, right? Again, and we, we talked about this on Saturday's episode. Governments feel entitled to your fiat. We saw Joe Biden literally stealing $3.5 billion from the Central Bank of Afghanistan, which belonged to the people of Afghanistan. And of course, because he's going it through the judge and the court system, that's okay. We saw the UK, right, not giving 
gold that belonged to Venezuela back to Venezuela because the you know right political power party was not in power. And again, I'm not a fan of Maduro whatsoever. But I'm just trying to give you guys a reference. I'm just trying to paint a picture for you guys. Governments feel like they fucking own you. And they really do if you use fiat. Take your financial sovereignty back. Take your individualism back. Opt the fuck out. Defund the beast. Anyways, Phil? Yeah, we're just going to, you know what? I, I mean, we're just going to see more and more of this, right? I, I feel like th this has been increasing. I, I mean, throughout my life, I don't recall seeing this this type of censorship, but I, I do recall, as I've said this story before, but, you know, I, I do recall people saying, you know, um, a bank will not take me on as a customer because I'm not financially viable. Okay, and I remember thinking to myself, everybody should be able to bank, right? Like, that, that, that shouldn't, you know, like, if you have value that you can provide and you can convert that into money, you need a place to store your money and all that good stuff, th there's no reason why you can't open a bank account and all these things. You know, but apparently... Apparently, banks were able to find people that were, quote unquote, not financially viable. But today, today, we're not even talking about financially viable people. We're just talking about people being outright censored. We don't like what you're doing. We are going to stop you from being able to feed your family. We are going to starve you out until you do what we say. But you live in a free country. Just, uh, you know, you're free to do what we say. That's mm -hmm. the freedom that you have. And this is just... Look, you know, we really do live in a clown world. We're feeling it. I, I, I think that we're definitely feeling it. And with every one of these stories, with every one of these situations that unravels, governments that practice this look absolutely more and more foolish and ridiculous. And, and don't get me wrong, but, you know, they're undoing themselves, right? Like, we're not unraveling them. You know, it's not like, oh, we're, you know, these people are, you know, Bitcoin's taking apart the government. No, 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 listen. Fiat was always a piece of shit. The governments have always been scamming us. <laughs> it's, it's just now we're able to see it. We have a proper marker against it. We're able to see how it's unraveling. Yep. That's and, the difference. And we have a tool to opt out. And That's I think right. you said something really important point there, Phil, right? Which is if you open, if you're Venezuelan or Iranian, you can't open a bank account. So, again, I'm going to talk about this, this concept of projection. They call Bitcoin white supremacists. The legacy financial system is actually white supremacist. And we actually have the receipts for that because they, they, they have a system of exclusion based on what country you happen to be born in. And most of those countries that they exclude you from happen to be countries that there's people of color, right? In Venezuela, for example, most people are a little bit darker than I am, right? So again, the legacy financial system is the racist one. Definitely not Bitcoin. Anyways, Nate, what are your thoughts? You ever think these people just sit back and wonder if they're the bad guy? <laughs> Like, I don't think so. I think they I think they sniff their own farts so right. hard that it's, they I think they're right. It. It's crazy, dude, because they um, can't be that maniacal that they're lying. I think they really believe. And I think about it like they <laughs> they're in their own bubble because they all they read their right. own propaganda pieces right. from the other pieces it's like, yeah, they're white supremacists. You know, they pick up the New York Times. It's like, yeah, so they, they like Bitcoin and they hate they hate they like guns and Bibles. Yeah, they're white supremacists like, dude, like it's a giant circle hey, jerk. So. <laughs> I, I've realized over the past few months that Bitcoin doesn't give people really not only financial sort of safety and, and security when you know what you're doing with it, but like it also kind of gives people the courage to speak, um, you know, without fear. Right. Because financial punishment is is has been a tool of governments and banks for a long time. And I think, uh, you know. People like you and me who have, I assume, most of our wealth in Bitcoin, we're we're OK if they shut down the bank, our bank. Don't care. You know, I mean, we need banks for some things, but I don't know, like a good example from for a macro now, scale for now, for now, for now. <laughs> we're trying really hard to fix that. And I think we're, that trajectory is ongoing. Um, I just think it's funny how. You know, I don't really have a fully developed opinion of the president of El Salvador, uh, Bukele, but I find Same it here. really interesting that he is so like trolly now 
that his country is yes. going Bitcoin, right? He is so trolly. He, I feel like he just has this confidence. Like, I don't need your dollar anymore. You can't stop me now. Exactly. And that's a mentality that I think most Bitcoiners eventually uh, develop. <laughs> Absolutely. And and this is, and I was actually, I'm so glad that you tied it up that way, Nate. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm talking about, guys. When you take back your financial sovereignty, which shit coins give you an illusion that they provide, but they do not, right? Only Bitcoin provides this. When you take back your financial sovereignty, it's incredibly empowering, right? Because remember, Bitcoin gives you the power to not only vote with your wallet, but also your feet. You could take everything with you. You could memorize a 12-word seed phrase. You can cross any borders, right? It's not a big deal. But Nate, we're running out of time, and I want oh, to do quick, one two more. Seconds. Okay, go ahead. Hit it, hit it, hit it, okay. hit it. I just want to say by trolley, I just mean like freedom to say what's on your mind. Honesty, right? Yes. So that's it. Gotcha. Thank you, bro. Okay, now check this out. Last one. We're going to try to run this. I know the episode's running a little late, guys. There's a lot of signal today. So... We check this out. Senator Ted Cruz discloses a Bitcoin purchase worth up to $50,000. Now, again, this all seems like noise, right? But again, right, we want, you know, more fiat politicians definitely on the side of Bitcoin. We have Cynthia, Senator Cynthia Loomis. We have Ron Wyden. Now we have Ted Cruz, right? And again, there's this, oh, there's this old saying, right? And we saw the videos from Elizabeth Warren, and they were absolutely hilarious. When she was essentially saying, why are we spend? She was in a Senate committee. And she was essentially saying, "Why are we spending money we don't have? This is the fault of the Republicans and the Democrats, right?" And we fundamentally believe you don't change Bitcoin; Bitcoin changes you. So notice the date, right? This was Saturday, February fifth, and a couple days later, right, about ten days later, Ted Cruz comes out February thirteenth. Why does Elizabeth? Warren hate Bitcoin for the same reasons that she and China hates Bitcoin. Neither one of them can control it. I'm going to play the video in a second. These authoritarians hate Bitcoin and they hate crypto and it's for the same reason. Why do they hate Joe Rogan? Because they can't control him. He's not subject to, to their hmm. authoritarian power. Why do they hate Bitcoin? Because they can't control it. It is a system of currency outside of the monopoly control of the U.S. government. And, and I got to say, as I've addressed, uh, you know, I, I spoke at a big crypto conference in, in Austin several months ago. And I said, listen, you need to understand this administration, I believe, is going to go after you and is going to try to destroy you. And by the way, that's a pattern of authoritarians. China, communist China, outlawed Bitcoin for the exact same reason. Why does Elizabeth Warren hate Bitcoin? For the same reason that she and China hates Bitcoin, because neither one of them can control it. And, and, and the theme through all of this is, is the power of freedom to be not subject to the arbitrary whims of those in government power. So beautifully said by wow. Ted Cruz. He is a politician, a master orator. Um, and yeah. It's, again, incredibly humbling, right, that the things, perhaps we don't say it as well, right, that the things that Phil and I have been noticing and picking up on these patterns, right, and accusing Elizabeth Warren of certain things, accusing China of certain things is actually being said at the tippity top of, you know, the, the institutions, the powerful institutions of, of you know of, of government in the United States they're essentially saying the arguments that Phil and I have been saying for months now right so Phil holy shit Tucker Carlson and Ted Cruz on the same day bro I think we might be on to something <laughs> but uh but yeah man incredibly humbling um Ted Cruz is absolutely right uh they're, they're using the climate they're using white supremacy as a fucking excuse Right. We, we've been saying that the entire time. Right. Since they started this bullshit. Excuse my language. And and yeah, man, this is again. And, and I, I completely agree when he says that, uh, you know, this current administration is going to be hostile towards Bitcoin because Bitcoin takes power away from them. It really does. Right. Um, and, you know, that's that's you, you saw Hillary Clinton when she said it. She literally said it. She's like, it's a threat to nation states right it's a threat to the nation state it's like absolutely not 
It's it's benefiting the people. It's a threat to the parasitic bureaucrat class. That's what it's a threat to. And they should be scared. Um, and it's exactly, I'm going to tie this in with what Nate was saying about how the best thing that you could do with Bitcoin, how you really win this fight is not going outside and, you know, protesting with the picket sign and whatever, you know, do that. That's all good and dandy. But how we really win this fight, just opting out, just opt out, get paid in Bitcoin. Take the Bitcoin self-custody. Get yourself out of the system completely. And if enough people do that, they don't have any power anymore. It's as simple as that. They'll try. They'll try. You know, they'll they'll bang and scream and call us white supremacists. Uh, you know, uh, it's bad for the climate. The next one I'm anticipating, I'm calling it right now, financial terrorist. First. We are broadening the scope of Canada's anti-money laundering and terrorist financing rules so that they cover crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers they use. These changes cover all forms of transactions, including digital assets, such as cryptocurrencies. Just for owning Bitcoin, you are a financial terrorist. You are a threat to national security, right? I mean, that's not even a guess anymore. The Biden administration actually said that, right? That uh, cryptocurrency, you know, it's a, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it, you know, it, it should be addressed because of national security, right? They're already trying to associate it. But again, they're not going to be able to craft the narrative, right? They're, they're, they, they don't have the ability to essentially manipulate people the way they used to right now that, you know, the Internet has essentially given everybody a voice and social media has allowed everybody to talk amongst each other freely without having to rely on, you know, certain institutions like the New York Times, like, you know, uh, CNN, like whatever. I fundamentally believe, and I got this from Jack Posobiec, by the way, so shout out to him, that if in 2003, if social media was around, we, we would not have invaded Iraq. They would mm -hmm. not have been able to get away with it. We saw the video of, of this guy in the pe uh, Pentagon, so, you know, essentially saying, yeah, Russia's going to invade. And then you see the reporter fact checking him like, do you have any evidence of that? And he's like, uh, I just gave it to you. No, it's like, but do you have evidence? That was the evidence. He so told it's, them. It's like. <laughs> The, the the psychopathic nature of these people is insane. And this is why we must separate money from state. Rant over. I'm sorry, Phil. No, that's all good, man. That was a good one. That was, that was a great rant. So you know what? First, we, we, we have to give we, we have to give props to the person who orange pilled Ted Cruz. Okay? Whoever orange pilled Ted Cruz, great work. He was able to explain it easily and it was it made sense um okay so i i'm obviously going to be the person that that says stuff that nobody likes um okay the his wording though talking about this administration don't get me wrong i appreciate what he's saying about bitcoin i appreciate that he is pro bitcoin but he right now bitcoin is being used as a as, as, as a partisan chip so I, I understand that they're politicians OK, and if it's good for Bitcoin, it's good for Bitcoin. But I just want to point that out. It's it's not all kumbaya, you know, uh, T Ted Cruz also mentions, quote unquote, crypto. So it's, uh, you know, it's to, to be I, to be fair, to be fair, Phil. Right. And yes. of course, we would not like this to become a partisan, no uh, partisan issue. It shouldn't but be to be fair. Right. Mm -hmm. Democratic senators and politicians have been much more hostile yes towards bitcoin than the republican the only this is what i hate though you only, know what i mean the only predominant republican that is against bitcoin was former president trump that he's actually gone on camera multiple times saying it's so funny though that the way that trump was is like i don't like bitcoin because it competes against the dollar you know he doesn't say it. he's, you know he's my, just so transparent about it you know my, my, my point is this though right like they're both that you know it's like one of them is for it, you know, for the, mo the most part. The other one is against it for the most part. But none of them are for or against it for the right reasons. It's all just bullshit and circle jerking. But does like, it really matter? No, it doesn't. But it we pisses just, we, me we, off we because just... we're all stuck dealing with the noise, right? Like, think about it. We have to go through all of these processes. We have to sit there and prove all this crap. It's, it's, a, it's wasting fucking time. That's all it is, man. It's just wasting time. Time that we don't have. 
<laughs> Anyways. I, uh, no, I agree. But I mean, but like, Phil, what what else did you expect, dude? I know. The, 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 I, I didn't like, expect anything. I, I just... Look, look, the separation of church and state was atrocious. A lot of heads got cut off in France, okay? Um, so, I mean, look, at least this is peaceful. At least this type of warfare, it's literally memes. You know, the worst thing that could happen is LC sending scat memes, right? Stop so, making sense. <laughs> Making so, sense. I'm not so, liking it. I mean, I'm definitely you know, more upset. Potato, like Greg's a potato, right? You know, we have to deal with yellow, but at least no heads are getting chopped off, so that's good, right? Um, so I mean, but yeah, this was always gonna be messy, bro. And you know, it, it blows my mind that the book Sovereign Individual predicted all of this fucking shit in the '90s. If you guys haven't read that book, I really recommend it. Anyways, Nate, do you have any closing thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Um... American politics is really jacked up. You know it's jacked up when the only reason one side doesn't like something is because the other side likes it. And it's ugh, and it's not just Bitcoin. It's like everything. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, every time like an entity tries to gain control of Bitcoin, they're the ones that end up losing more control than they originally had to begin with. Um, it's like trying to run up a hill that's made out of ice. <laughs> but... Um, trying to fight bitcoin is like trying to fight basic mathematics you know there there's fundamental truths in the world and bitcoin's one of them and uh i don't think these people and governments and stuff should underestimate people who just want to be left alone so thanks for having me on guys i appreciate it absolutely man but remember nowadays two plus two equals five or you're a racist white supremacist. Anyways, Phil, there was an open source software release today. Why do you tell everybody about it? Software releases. Brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out, cyphersafe.io. It's the best place to store your Bitcoin seed. Check out the Cypher Wheel or the all new Cypher Grid. Comes complete with punch tool and tamper resistant wire. We've got BTC Pay Server version 1.4.4 that was released. It's down below in the show notes. Guys, you know the deal. We post rain or shine unless we tell you that we're not posting. Don't forget to check us out on our audio only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify and Anchor. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. All right, guys, that was our show. Before we go, I want to give a very special shout out to a friend of the show. This guy's the man. Go give him a follow on Twitter. B for Bacon. Check out his new show. It's called This Week in Lightning. It's on Bitcoin TV. And he is uh, a support engineer for Voltage.cloud, building really cool stuff on Bitcoin using Lightning. Super awesome. Guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed this show. Smash the like button. Smash it. Smash it. Smash it. Smash it. And, of course, if you want to continue hearing the Bitcoin news from the Plea Pleb perspective, which apparently actually kind of works, and the catastrophic fails from Elizabeth Warren, the Chinese Communist Party, and the goddamn white supremacists, they suck too. Definitely consider subscribing to Simply Bitcoin, and we'll see you tomorrow, guys, for a brand new episode. Contrary to what they pretend, the legacy financial banking system is exclusionary. (laughs) 